Welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about factoring quadratic expressions that look like this. Trinomials that have an x squared term, an x term, and a constant term. Specifically, we'll be looking at cases in which the x squared term has a coefficient of 1. Factoring these expressions will give us results that look like this. A binomial multiplied by another binomial. To get a sense of how we can factor these expressions, let's start by doing the opposite, expanding a factored expression. For example, x plus 4 times x plus 5. To multiply these binomials, we use the distributive property. In the end, each term in the first set of brackets gets multiplied by each term in the second set of brackets. x times x gives us x squared. x times 5 gives us 5x. 4 times x gives us 4x. And finally, 4 times 5 gives us 20. Notice that we can simplify this result by adding the like terms 5x and 4x to get 9x. Let's now turn our attention to how we could go about factoring our result here to get back to the initial expression. That is, how can we factor x squared plus 9x plus 20 to get x plus 4 times x plus 5? First, notice that when multiplied, the x terms of our two factors give us the x squared term of the expanded expression. Similarly, the constant terms 4 and 5 multiply to give us the constant term 20 in the expanded expression. But why do these values have to be 4 and 5? Couldn't they be 2 and 10, or 1 and 20? No, they couldn't, because in addition to multiplying to the constant term of 20, when each of these two values is multiplied with the x term of the other factor, the combined result must be 9x. So, in addition to multiplying to 20, these two values must also add to 9. Therefore, when factoring x squared plus 9x plus 20, we know that each factor must have an x term, and the constant terms in the two factors must multiply to 20 and add to 9. Let's apply this thinking to the factorization of a few other trinomials, starting with x squared plus 8x plus 12. We know that the factored result will have two binomial factors, each containing an x term. We also know that the constant terms in these factors must multiply to 12, and add to 8. Let's think of some whole numbers that multiply to 12. We have 1 times 12, 2 times 6, and 3 times 4, as well as these pairs in reverse order. In addition to multiplying to 12, the two numbers must also add to 8. The only pair that meets this requirement is 2 and 6. Therefore, we must add constants of 2 and 6 in our factors, giving us a final factored result of x plus 2 times x plus 6. Note that there are other ways to write this result. For example, we could switch the order of these factors to get a result of x plus 6 times x plus 2. Now let's factor x squared minus 11x plus 24. Again, our result will have an x term in each set of brackets. This time, the constant terms of our factors must multiply to 24 and add to negative 11. Some whole numbers that multiply to 24 are 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, and 4 and 6. We want the pair that also add to negative 11. But wait a minute. None of these pairs will add to negative 11 because they're all positive values. Notice that 3 and 8 add to positive 11, though. If we make both of these values negative, they'll now add to negative 11, and still multiply to positive 24. So the constant terms in our factors are negative 3 and negative 8, and we can write the final factored expression simply as x minus 3 times x minus 8 or x minus 8 times x minus 3. For our final example, let's factor x squared plus 7x minus 30. As usual, we start each factor with an x term. Here, we're looking for constant terms that multiply to negative 30 and add to positive 7. Let's start by thinking about whole numbers that multiply to 30 instead of negative 30. We have 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 3 and 10, and 5 and 6. We know that one value in each of these pairs must actually be negative since they're supposed to multiply to negative 30. We also know that the two values must add to 7. So at this point, we can look for the pair that would add to 7 if one of the values was negative. 3 and 10 is the pair we want, since if we make the 3 negative, the two values multiply to negative 30 and add to positive 7. Therefore, our factors are x minus 3 and x plus 10 which we could also write in the reverse order. 
Be sure to check out the link in this video's description to access hundreds of interactive exercises similar to the examples in this video.